Hi there. Today we are looking at the structure of the atmosphere. As we sit at the bottom of the atmosphere on the surface of the Earth, and we look up at the clouds and high-flying aircraft, it seems that the atmosphere is absolutely enormous, and to our tiny scale it is. But if we go up into space and look at the atmosphere from the vantage of, say, the International Space Station from which this photograph was taken, we see that the atmosphere is just a very, very thin layer lying on the surface of the Earth. This photograph was taken at sunset, so there is the sun disappearing behind the Earth. If we were to draw this to a different scale and say draw a curve of a quarter of the Earth's surface, there is the center of the Earth, and we measure that radius there of the Earth, this radius is about 7,000 kilometers. So out of 7,000 kilometers, how thick is the atmosphere? Well, as we can see here, there is the surface of the Earth. The atmosphere becomes invisible at about that height. In other words, it's so thin that there's not enough air there to scatter the light from the sun and allow us to see it. And that depth there is about 100 kilometers. So the effective atmosphere is about 100 kilometers. Now, why I say effective? is because above that, there still will be some gas, but it's, the molecules are so widely scattered that they're not sufficient to even slow down spacecraft, say, flying at 200 kilometers. Then, if we look at the, this as a living space, of this 100 kilometers, how much can we actually live in? Well, let's consider, first of all, the highest flying aircraft. Highest flying aircraft fly at about 15 kilometers. Normal commercial aircraft fly at about 10 kilometers or even a bit less. Top of Mount Everest is at 9. Top of Kilimanjaro at 4, at, at 5 rather. And the highest permanent settlement on the planet is at about 4 kilometers, 4,000 meters. So in other words, we can't live in about 95% of the atmosphere. There is simply not enough air, not enough pressure, not enough oxygen to sustain us. But there's all sorts of really interesting stuff happening in this layer here. And that's what we're going to look at. But before we go to that in any detail, we can also look within this layer and say, right, if there is the surface, how high are the highest clouds? If you take a big thunderstorm, a big thunderstorm goes up to about 15 kilometers, not, not much, in fact, very rarely more. So there would be a big thunderstorm, your highest flying aeroplanes, also much around about that height. Okay, so that gives us an idea of the scale that at 15 kilometers, that's a tiny little part of this atmosphere here. That is where humans are. So a whole lot of stuff happening above that, which is very interesting. If we to draw a graph of the pressure from that top of the atmosphere, there's 100 kilometers up there. Here is the surface. And this axis is pressure. You see the pressure is very high close to the surface, and it drops off very, very quickly. And by the time we get to 100, it is so close to zero as makes no difference. That would also be a measure of the, the density of the air would also look something like that. So in other words, at 4 kilometers or so, well, that's the way I've drawn that, that's about 10 kilometers. At 4 kilometers, here, we've got sufficiently high pressure to survive. So that's where our highest permanent settlement is. Right. So, let's leave it there, and then we will go into the next lesson where we will look at in detail at what is happening in this 100 kilometers.